Hi guys, it's Caroline again. I know it's a little early to do my end of the year favorites, but what the hell, I'm going to do it now. Let me first say, all of the things that I'm going to mention in here are things that I found in 2014. So some of them are older, but they're all things that I didn't know about until 2014. So um, the first few things I want to talk about are TV shows. First I have two YouTube web series. So first is Job Hunters. I watched it all in one day, honestly. It's about these um, people in a dystopian world and you have to go into the arena, much like a Hunger Games type thing, and then at night you go to your safe house until you get a job offer, which is why it's called Job Hunters. So there's a little bit of love, some friends, it's pretty interesting. And the other web series I wanted to mention are the Pemberley Digital ones. So, Lizzie Bennet Diaries, obviously. There's Emma Approved now, which I really liked, but I know a lot of people didn't like it as much. And my favorite one is a collab with PBS, and it's Frankenstein MD, and it's about Victoria Frankenstein and bringing someone back to life. And every episode has a little bit of a science feature, so it's kind of another lesson, so you learn about things, and which is why it's a collab with PBS. And I thought that was so cool. I love it. I hope they bring it back. I could go on on my favorite YouTubers forever, but those are just the two series in particular that I liked. And the other ones I want to talk about are all TV series. Now, I do almost all of my TV watching through Hulu or Netflix. I don't have a TV. I don't have a cable connection. So the first one that I want to mention is the following. Now, I just started the second season. I just watched the first episode in the second season last night. It's a, about a cult and their followers of the serial killer and he breaks out of jail and he kidnaps his son. The guy tries to find him and bring him to justice and then now he wants revenge. It's fast paced, it's a little scary, it's definitely like a thriller drama type TV show but I like it a lot. A TV show that's particularly new to me is How to Get Away with Murder and that's new, it came out this um, fall, the season just ended and it's kind of like a modern geared towards younger people version of a uh, daytime TV soap opera. It's a character based, you learn about the characters, they try to solve this murder and at the end of the season you find out what actually happened when because it's flashbacks and stuff and it's really cool. I recommend watching it if you like that kind of thing. So there's two more that I want to talk about and they're older TV shows. The first one is Grimm. Grimm is a lot like the first two seasons of Supernatural. There's case files and they solve crimes and it's supernaturally stuff. And I don't like Supernatural very much anymore. I liked the first two seasons when it was kind of like the X-Files. I love the X-Files, probably my favorite TV show of all time. And Grimm is kind of similar to that. The other one is not something I heard about in 2014, but it is ending. It's on its last season and it's White Collar and it's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I have shown it to a lot of people who like it. Again, it's a crime drama. It's funny. That's why I like it. It's pr really funny. Actually. I want to talk about a couple of food items. First is Five Ascent Gum. It's the mintiest gum I have ever tried. I love it. I love the really, really minty gums. I chew this a lot. I've probably gone through six packs in the last 15 week semester. The next thing is a tea. It is Tivana Wild Orange Blossom. I can't believe I spent this much money on tea, guys. Like, it's obscene. It looks like this. It smells so good. It tastes almost like it's already pre sweetened. There's little um, orange rinds and stuff in there, like pieces of dried fruit. There's obviously tea in it. It's a herbal tea. It is surprisingly sweet for not adding sugar to it. I'm a tea purist. I don't like anything in my teas but tea. No milk, no sugar, nothing. And this is really good. It was worth the ridiculous amount of money I spent on this tea. I usually just buy like bags of black tea or herbal tea from the supermarket. And my last food item is popcorners. Now a lot of people can't have popcorn because the kernels are bad for your teeth, especially when you're older. These are like popcorn chips, they're little triangles. I just like the plain sea salt flavor. They're really crunchy like a chip, but they're kind of like that popcorn-y texture. Oh. This bag isn't very like puffy, but they're just like a chip like that. They're really good if you want like a salt fix or something or you can't eat popcorn. Next I'm going to get into books, which is probably why you're watching this. 
I don't have any of my books here. I'm gonna try to put pictures again over here somewhere. But I have two dust jackets to show you. The first one is Scott Westerfeld Afterworlds. This is one of my favorite books I've read in a very long time. Uh, it shouldn't surprise anyone. I liked all of his other books. And this is no exception. Really liked it. YA, easy read, very thick read. The other dust jacket I have is Yes Please by Amy Poehler. And this is a funny book. If you liked Tina Fey Bossy Pants, you'll probably like this book as well. It's her autobiography or type thing. She talks about a bunch of various things and it's funny. She doesn't take herself too seriously and it really got me into reading a lot of other autobiographies again. I only have a couple from people that I really like but this has made me pick up a couple more. I have a few more to talk about. The next one is Maureen Johnson, The Name of the Star specifically. Now I like her on Tumblr and Twitter. She's really funny. I've seen her at LeakyCon and it was great. So I shouldn't be surprised that I like her books, but by reading them and reading about them online, I always thought they were kind of like YA, girly, romancy, not my kind of thing. And I picked up The Name of the Star. It's about a girl who has a near-death experience and starts to be able to see ghosts. But the first one, The Name of the Star, is really good and funny. Next would be Gone Girl. And I know everyone's talking about that. The movie just came out. I've heard the movie is not as good as the book. It's more thriller. And again, Gone Girl has some funny, interesting bits. At first I was like, what's going to happen? Is this real? Is it fake? Whatever. But when you get to find out what the twist is, by the time you get there, you've already figured it out. But it was a good thriller. Next one is Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. Who wouldn't want to read a book about a 24-hour bookstore? Come on, really. It's a really good book about a guy who needs a job, applies for this bookstore, gets brought into this whole... I don't think conspiracy is the right word, I don't know. It's really interesting, it's really well written. The co cover glows in the dark, which is really cool. And finally, Ready Player One. It takes place, the guy programs his video game, he's probably born around the same time like I am, I'm not entirely sure. And this is, takes place in the future, people try to figure it out, they know everything about this guy who made this game. And there's a lot of like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings type references, things that are popular now. So it was really interesting and one of my favorite dystopian books I've read. I'm, I think everyone's kind of over that by now. Next I have a 3DS game. This is my Nintendo DS. I have the beautiful big red XL one. And I don't have the case for this here because I just have all my games in this case. But right inside it right now is Bravely Default. So anyway, Bravely Default is really fun. I highly recommend it if you want a good RPG monster fighting game. It's really cool. You can turn the difficulty way up or way down and the frequency of running into creatures. Unlike Pokemon, everyone knows you find like a million friggin' gold bats in the cave. Next I have a couple music recommendations. The first one is Taylor Swift, 1989. It'll leave you breathless or with a nasty scar. Cause darling, I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream. Boys only want love if it's torture. Don't say I didn't, say I didn't warn ya. I have two more music recommendations for the year. The first, uh, the second is Against Me and their new album Transgender Dysphoria Blues. If you like any of Against Me, any kind of that um, gritty punk type feeling, you'll probably really like this album. It's one of my favorite albums in a very long time. And finally, there's a local band from Maine called Too Late the Hero, and they came out with a new album, The Elevator Pitch. It's a lot harder than their old albums are, but it's really good. If you like hard rock, I highly recommend it. I'm sure you can find those online. Um, unfortunately, Taylor Swift, you can only find the singles on YouTube. I have a few apps I want to recommend. The um, first one's for actually a download for your computer. It's called Omwriter. It, um, it's really nice for writing. If you like writing poetry or short stories, or even for class, you can change the background and some soothing music and whatever. It makes writing a lot more enjoyable. I'm not a writer by any means. Then I have a few apps for my phone. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you. The first one is Zombies Run. So you can come in and you have your missions, your story, which is the main plot, some airdrops if you want to get more things, race, and the radio, which will play if you download it after you finish the story, which is usually, you gotta choose between half an hour and an hour, and mine are half an hour, usually stop around 25 minutes, so I will listen to the radio for a while. And there's a new feature where you can not have to put your music on a program that's compatible with this, which Google Play and Amazon is not. 
Then I have two games. The first is called Two Dots, and I'm not sure if it's by the same company, but there's regular dots. I have both of them. These are all the games on my phone. Two Dots has more of a story. Um, dots, you can choose either timed or number of moves, and you just play. And it's really fun if you're bored, whatever. You try to make squares with it. So this is the level I'm stuck on right now. And you just come on and making squares makes a bunch of them disappear, but you don't have to make squares. It's really fun. The other game I want to recommend is called Don't Touch the Spikes. And they recently updated this to have challenges in it, and there's a few different ways you can play, but the basic one is you go like this and you try to collect the candies and don't hit the spikes. And when you collect enough candies, you can unlock new birds and stuff. So now we're pretty much done with everything except craft stuff and makeup. So my aunt makes these little needle felting things and she sells them. She made me an anglerfish and an elephant. And I found out this year that Walmart actually sells yarn. I usually buy my yarn at like Michaels or Joann Fabrics, but Walmart's a lot easier to get to where I am. So I'm in the middle of making a scarf for my mom for Christmas, like this, and I have been knitting for a little over a year now. This is the first big project for someone else I've taken on. Other than that, all of the things I have are beauty related. So the first things I'll talk about are eyeshadows. I got this Bare Min Minerals quad. It's the dream sequence, and specifically this one color right here. Look at that. So beautiful. It's a lot like Max Hypnotizing, which I never got and wish I did. It's kind of this purpley taupey color. It's so beautiful. And the other thing is Max Naked, uh, Mac, Urban Decay's Naked Basics. I want to get the second one. But you have all these neutral colors, they're all matte, except for this one, which is kind of satin. And this is pretty much what I wear every day. You can see the black is pretty much like halfway gone because I use that as my eyeliner. Most of the time I wear eyeliner. And some good colors. These ones are both basically like my skin tone, so when I want to do something pretty neutral, natural, like what I'm wearing today, just a little bit of mascara, I'll put that just to cover up some of the redness around my eyes. You can probably even use it to set concealer if you wear it. And then I have an eyeliner from Jessie's Girl, and the tip is really thin, which is why I like it. It's like calligraphy style, so it's really easy to get really thin lines if you want to do a flick at the outside. And it's really similar to the Milani one, which I have tried because it's easier to find, but this is a lot darker. The Milani one looks gray compared to this. I don't know where I can buy it. it I think it might have been limited edition. But if you can find it, this is the best liquid liner I've ever tried. A couple last things to mention. My skin reacts very well to the sulfur masks, like this proactive pore refining mask. I'm breaking out from stress right now, so I don't know if there's a lot I can do about it, but this helps a lot. The Love and Toast hand cream. This one is in Gin Blossom, and it smells really good, and it's a lot more moisturizing, but still sinks in quickly, so you can keep typing or whatever. Clump Crusher Mascara by CoverGirl. This is the only mascara I've found that doesn't burn my eyes. I'm not sensitive to most things, but for some reason, whatever they put in mascara really makes my eyes uncomfortable, red, irritated. This one is water resistant, and this is the only water resistant, waterproof formula that I like also because it is good in rain. It won't smudge everywhere, but at the same time, it's easy to take off at the end of the day. And finally, I have two lipsticks, both by MAC. The purple one is Pure Heroin, right here. Uh, you can get it by mixing Rebel and regular heroin. Unfortunately, it was limited edition. I really, really, really hope they bring it back because it's my favorite lipstick of all time. Before I got this one, I actually did mix Max Heroin and Max um, Rebel together to get a very similar color. The other one is kind of a pinky reddy color. It's kind of a cool tone, pinky red. And it is called Mac Red by Mac. Yes, they're very conceited apparently. And it's what I'm wearing right now, and I really like it a lot. I think it looks good on me. Probably looks good on most people. 
but I, that was kind of exactly the color I was looking for and I'm glad I found one. So what did you like this year? Let me know in the comments. Uh, anything that you liked at all. I think I got all my bases covered, everything that's pretty important to me. I'm probably missing many things that I've found and liked and some categories that I never even thought of. So let me know what you liked this year. Hopefully 2015 is a good year. I'll be graduating, so that's exciting. And I hope 2014 was a good year for you, a better year for you than it was for me. This year was, whew, like three years crammed into one. Okay, see you guys soon.